Amen. Again, 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 we say good evening to each and every one. Uh, we bring you greetings from First Crown Ministries on today, and we do give God praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. We have our worshiper in the background this morning, hallelujah. this evening. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God. And we're going to have Eldris Deidre Houston to give us a prayer, and then we're going to go right into the service. Hallelujah. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, yes. we come before your throne of grace yes. on today. Yes. Oh, Lord, we hallow your name yes, in Lord this Jesus. place. Um, oh, Lord, we thank you, God, you, for what you are getting ready to do Hallelujah. for your people. Um, now, most heavenly Father, Lord, use your woman servant yes. for your yes. glory. Um, oh, Lord, move by your spirit yes, with a demonstration of your power. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I ask that you will rain on us on today, yes, God. Lord. Oh, Lord, I ask that you will show us the way on today, yes, God. Lord. Oh, Lord, your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth My of God. God. And Lord, we are hungry for yes, your word. Yes. We are thirsty yes, for your word. Lord. Now, Lord, we ask that you will just have your way. Have your Lord, way, Lord, touch the hearts of the people that are yes, listening God. on today. Oh, Lord, let them be able to receive it, My God. Jesus. Oh, Lord, but not only be listeners of your yes. word, but doers of your word indeed. God. And God, we thank you, thank you we praise you, we praise and you we glorify you, yes. God, yes. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Glory to Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you, God. We extol you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, for what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you. If you will, turn with me to Exodus, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Exodus, the fourth chapter. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get there. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We have already been blessed. Amen. 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 Just by just talking to one another about the glory of God. And all right. I'm reading from the open Bible, so it may sound a little different, but it's all the same. Then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. They that may believe that the Lord, God of the fathers of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew out of his bosom and behold, it was restored as the other flesh. Then it will be if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign. Mm. They that may believe the message of the latter sign, and it shall be if they do not believe these two signs or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on dry land, and the water which you take from the river will become blood on dry land. Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, 
Who has made man's mouth? Who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have I not, the Lord said, but he said, oh, my Lord, please sin by the hand of whomever else ye may sin. Topic for today is understand the assignment. Now, God had already given Moses instructions. He had already told him what to do. How many of us know that even on last Sunday, we talked about temporary inconveniences and how trouble don't last always and, and how storms in life have got to cease. Well, today we need to understand the assignment. See, even in all of that, even in all the storms, even in all the temporary inconveniences, there is an assignment. There is something for you to do. And if you don't understand the assignment, you cannot fulfill what God has said to you or has told you to do. Moses told God, I got a slow tongue. I don't speak that well. I, 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 I may stutter a little bit. God said, but who made your mouth? Who made the blindness see? Who made the mute to speak? Who made the deaf to ear? Was it not I? So whatever it is that God has told you to do, if he's already put it in you, you don't have no excuse. But sometimes we have excuses. Sometimes we make our own excuses. I'm, I don't think I am the one that needs to do this or, or I don't feel certain that I can handle this situation or, or God, I don't believe I can do it. God said, but I told you what to do. So even with Moses, he had to make Moses understand. He had to give Moses some options. He had to give him some signs. So he told him, he said, okay, what I want to do, what's that in your hand, Moses? Moses said, it's, it's a rod, Lord. He said, okay, cast it on the ground. And he did, and it became a serpent. He said, okay, now that you see what I can do, pick it up by the tail. And when he did, it became a rod again. He also told him, he said, okay, you, did, you didn't quite get it, Moses. I, I know the intent of your heart. I know what you're thinking, okay, Lord, okay, you did that, but, but they still may not believe me. They still may not receive me. He said, that's okay, so I'm gonna show you something else. Put your hand in your bosom, Moses, and when you take it, out look at it and he was like oh lord my hand is leopard i'm sick he said okay now what i want you to do put it back in your bosom moses because i see i gotta show you some things so that you can understand the assignment that i'm giving to you hallelujah so therefore moses pulled his hand out and it was restored like other he said moses said but lord what if they don't hear me what if what if they don't believe okay moses i'm getting tired now I've already told you what to do. I've given you signs and I've given you wonders and I've set miracles before you and I've already gave you instructions and you still don't believe that you got the stuff. Okay, Moses, what I want you to do, if they don't believe you, then what I need for you to do is I need for you to go to the rock, get water, pour it on dry ground, and it's going to turn into blood. That right there should be enough. Moses said, okay, Lord, but, but see, but, but, but see, Lord, but, but see, 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 Lord, see, uh, I, 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 I get kind of scared sometimes, and I'm paraphrasing this thing. I get kind of scared sometimes when 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 I go before people and 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 sometimes Lord I I I, I get the stuttering and 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 see they may not understand me and they may laugh at me and 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 they may not want to believe that you told me be, be, because see 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 Lord I, I I ain't my words ain't flowing right God said I didn't ask you that I gave you an assignment Okay, so, so we got all of that. What does understand mean? To interpret or view. 
Did Moses interpret and view what God had told him to do? He saw it, but he intellectually take it in and say, okay, I serve a God that can do miraculous things, but I'm still not sure because he called me. That's okay. Assignment, a task or a piece of work given to someone as a part of a job or a course of study. He gave him a job. His job was to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But because Moses was afraid, because Moses wanted to make excuses, he said, my, my, but, but Lord, whoever hand you send forth, he said, okay, I see your, your brother Aaron coming. I'm going to give you some backup. Hmm. I'm going to give you some backup. I'm going to give you somebody that's going to go with you since you, you, you don't feel like you can accomplish the mission. But the mission is already accomplished because I had already instilled it in you. That's why I came to you and I gave this task to you. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we are given assignments in life, emotions begin to take over. We get emotionally overwhelmed. Emotionally overwhelmed. We feel like we can't handle it. We want to pass it off on somebody else. When sickness comes into our home and we have to be the main primary caretaker, we be like, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. When we are going through school and we are being bombarded with tests and studies and we be like, Lord, I don't know if I can handle this. I just want to throw in the towel, but he won't allow you to do that or sometimes he will give you an assignment and, and you are denied and you feel like okay I've been denied several times I'm just not going to, to do it anymore I'm not even going to proceed with that thing anymore but God said if I put the stuff in you you ain't got no reason to fulfill the assignment yeah, hallelujah glory to God sorrowfulness we can be, we can be confused. We become doubtful. We become uncertain. We become scared. Even hardship may come to us, especially when we are in the midst of our children doing everything they big and bad enough to do. And that weighs heavy on us because we're right there. We see it, but we know that we have an assignment and the assignment is to lay before God for them. The assignment is to tell them what they don't want to hear. The assignment Assignment is to prove that God is who he says he is. Yeah. My, my, my. When God gives us an assignment, we don't have to know whether we can do it or not. We just got to trust him that we can. Why? Because he's already, again, put the stuff in us. The stuff is in us. If he made you, he put the stuff in you. If he created you, he put the stuff in you. Oh so it don't matter how bad situations may seem. It don't matter how hard the task may be. It don't even matter how you feel about the task at hand. What you got to do is you got to trust and believe that God is God. And if he brought me to it, he going to bring me through All it. Right, it. Remember last Sunday, we said for everything that goes on in this world or in our lives, there's someone that has already paved the way and God has already let them show us that we can overcome. Okay, glory to God. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down memory lane just a little bit on today. We're gonna talk about Abraham and how the hardship was for Abraham when God set the assignment to him and told him, I want you to take your son, Isaac, and I want you to go up to Mount Moriah and I want you to sacrifice him for me. God already knew the plan. He already knew what was going to happen. He was trying Abraham because Abraham didn't say, Lord, I'm not going to do it. Lord, I got slower speech. Lord, I, I, I don't know if I can handle this. That's my only son. He didn't say anything, but what he did is he gathered his son and they went on a trip and they went to Mount Moriah and, and even Isaac, Isaac, the Bible said that he, he was he was a child but Isaac was 33 years old 33 he was a grown man but yet and still he was his son 
he had an assignment to fulfill. So he said, come on, Isaac, let's go. And two other men went with him. Y'all know the story. They went up, he laid him, made the altar. He laid him on the altar and he began to raise his hand. And God said, do that child no harm. I want to try your heart. He fulfilled the assignment. And then he looked over there and he saw that there was a lamb in the thicket. He said, that's my God. He is Jehovah what Jireh. He is my provider. So he provides him. He is a provider to us. If we will trust him and do what he says, we won't have to worry about what the outcome will be because we will have the victory. Hallelujah. Okay, let us go down a little bit further. Let us go about where Mary, when, when the angel Gabriel went to Mary and told Mary, Mary, you have been chosen, and I'm paraphrasing, you have been chosen to carry a child. And she said, wait, 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 I'm confused here. How can I carry a child when I've not known a man? My God. He said, it is bid unto you. It's your assignment. God chose you, Mary, to carry his son, to bring him through the birth canal as flesh. She said, but what are they going to think about me? What are they going to say about me? How am I going to look to the people in the community? I don't know a man. My stomach is going to grow. I'm going to be pregnant. They know that I don't know a man. What they, it don't matter what they think about oh, you. Man. It's what God thinks about you. And they, and in the end, he said, you have found favor with God because she completed the assignment that was given to her. And she loved her son. She loved him until the day he died on the cross. She had the ultimate assignment and that was to bring forth the son of God. Okay. That, that, that right there, that's good. Can you get it right now? Do you understand where I'm going? Can you see where we're headed? If you got an assignment, you got to fulfill it. If you don't fulfill the assignment, you just well to be cast away because there's no hope for you. You got to do what God say, do when he say, do it, how he say, do it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Jesus had an assignment. Yes, he did. He had the greatest assignment. And that was to come down through 42 generations and to, be, and to become the ultimate sacrifice. He had an assignment. He even had his boys, his homies, to go into the wilderness with him somewhat. They went to, to the wilderness and they prayed. And he said, you all can't even stay awake with me. He was in agony. He felt the assignment, the sorrowfulness of what his body was going to have to go through for the world. He did that, but he did not say, I don't want to do this, Father. I don't want to do this. I don't want no part of this. He said, if it be that this cup pass from me, but he said, it, let it be thine will. Father, let your will be done. Don't let my will be done because see right now I want to give it up because it's hard for me. But he said, Father, let your will be done. And he gave up the ghost. He fulfilled the assignment. And that is why we have the right to the tree of life today. That's why we have a savior. Understand the assignment. Understand that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, it's a part of your assignment. It may be hard. It may be sorrowful. It may, it, it may bog you down. It may make you pull your hair out. But if you are stick and stay and don't give up, you will have victory for your assignment. It's just like when we go to school and, and, and we take classes when you go to math class, you ain't being taught English. <laughs> when you go to PE class, you ain't being taught math. 
When you go to math class, you're being taught adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. When you go to English class, you're being taught nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, all of those good things. Don't get it mixed up. Don't try to go your way. Because if you do, you're going to be sitting in math class and you're going to be studying English. You're going to get stuff mixed up. But if you will order your steps as the Lord orders your steps and walk accordingly, you won't have to worry about what your outcome is going to be because you'll be somewhere shouting and praising God, giving him the victory because he brought you over. Why? Because you fulfilled the assignment. Many people feel that because of their sins and their imperfections, God turn them away. No, God turns to you. That'll make him turn to you and even the more. Why? Because he knows that we are imperfect. He knows that we don't have it all together. He knows that we don't even know the way. That's how come he give us the word to provide us a map, to provide us a way to go and how to go. Ministers, preachers, apostles, spewing out the word of God to give you a way to fulfill the assignment that has been given unto you. God uses crisis to transform our lives. See, if we don't ever go through nothing, we can't never attest to nothing. And if we don't ever attest to nothing, we ain't gonna never know how we got from A to, to B. You gotta go through something in order to get something. I know this man that body racked in pain for the last two months. We just came out of Holy Week. And I told his wife, I said, understand the assignment. She said, I don't know if I, I, I just feel like I'm about to lose hope. I said, hold on, hold on. Miracle signs and wonders are yet on their way. He drove all the way to North Carolina from South Carolina pain free. Hallelujah. I'm talking about my brother-in-law and I'll tell that testimony. Could not sit down for two months, had to lay down, could not sit. Body racking in pain. You gotta understand the assignment. It don't feel good. It don't feel good, but God never said it would. He just said, trust me. No matter what you go through, trust him. You will fulfill the assignment. You will. It may not look like it right now, but it don't have to. Stop looking at the situation and focused on what God says. Focused on the prize. Focus on God. And you'll be able to fulfill your assignment. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word yes. that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yes. Cast all your burdens upon me, for I care for you. Yes. I'll never leave you nor forsake Thank you. God. Even the ones that were in the wilderness 40 years, he didn't leave them. Even in their mumbling and grumbling and complaining, their shoes never wore out, their clothes never wore out, but they had an assignment. Some of them made it, some of them didn't. But the ones that did, they crossed over into the land of milk and honey. Where's your milk and honey? Jesus. Get a taste of it. 
is sweet and it's sweet every day. Every day it gets sweeter and sweeter. But you got to go through something. Don't think you can make it without going through something. We all got to go through something. We got to be tried by fire. This flesh has got to die daily. If this flesh don't die daily, you ain't going nowhere. You just spinning wheels. You running in place. You marking time. Ain't you tired of marking time? Ain't you tired of running in place? Ain't you tired of always being the same place you've always been? Let's move. Trust God. Understand the assignment. If we can get that in our minds to understand the assignment and the only thing you got to do. How do I understand the assignment? Trust God. You've prayed, you've labored, you fasted. Now trust him. Trust him. That's what Abraham did. That's what Moses did. Jesus did it. He did it. He trusted his father. That's what we got to do. Is understand the assignment. And I'm done. I'm done. But it's time out for playing. It's time out for wavering the fence. It's time out. Be real or be still. And no matter what you're going through, just know he, he has an answer for everything. And it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's, it's hard. We're going through some tough times. But it's all a part of your assignment. And after you've passed this test and after you've fulfilled your assignment, you can contest to it. You'll have a praise report. And you'll be able to help somebody else go through their go through. Because a lot of times what we go through, it ain't for us. It's for somebody else. Stop saying, why me? Why me? Why me? Why not you? You ain't no better than nobody else. You ain't no better than the ones from Genesis to Revelation. You ain't no different. We all seeking the same God. And we're all seeking the same home, and that's heaven. When we close our eyes in death, you have an assignment. You've been charged today. You've been charged today to fulfill your assignment. Don't quit. Don't give up. And by all means, don't give out. Stick and stay. Just like hot rice on gravy. Stick and stay. Stick and stay. I promise you, you'll make it. I promise you. I love each and every one. To God be all the glory. If there's anyone that don't know the Father in the pardon of his sins out there in, 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 in cyber world, we are asking you now that you will just receive Christ. We will pray with you. Father, we thank you, Lord, on today. We ask God that you will forgive us for all of our sins, Lord. We need you. We believe that you are the son of God and that you died for our sins. And we accept you now into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thank you from First Crown Ministries. We hope and pray that you have received this word and that it will be healing, it will be deliverance, it will be uh, whatever you need it to be in this season for your life. We thank you and we give God all glory, honor, and praise. We love you. Good evening.